Hello and welcome back to the Felix Frame where we frame the news you need to know. We are your hosts, Chris Knapp and Cooper Pryfogel. Let's get into the news. Today is the first Fast Friday of the nine weeks. Remember to follow the Fast Impact Friday schedule and to attend your interventions if you have to stay. Next week in sports, there's tennis, baseball, and track meets. Look at the events tab on the LHS website for more information. There is an e-learning day on Monday, April 8th due to the solar eclipse. Remember to wear your solar eclipse glasses if you go outside. The Student Council is hosting a blood drive on April 11th. If you are 16 years old or older, sign up on your class's Schoology page. In other news, the tab in the yearbooks have been digitalized and can be seen online. You can look at the yearbooks all the way back to when Logansport High School was a brand new school. Here is Principal Matt Jones to tell you more. How did you get the idea to put all the tellers online? Well, it, it has been a on the list for probably 10 to 12 years to digitize the Tattlers. I mean, they go all the way back to 1907 and, and we have every copy. And as they start to deteriorate, we wanted to at some point get them online before they get so bad. Uh, and then plus access for you know alumni and people out there to be able to take a look at them uh, whenever they want. So it's you know it was kind of one of those things we just kind of kicked the can down the road a little bit, never got around to it. And then finally uh, we just kind of made it a point of emphasis, a goal this year to get those done. What was the process of getting all the tattlers online? Well, first off, we had to find a company who could do it. Uh, we could have done it somewhat in-house if we would have scanned every page. Uh, <laughs> that would take a long time. I don't know if we have uh, as high resolution scanners within our copiers that uh, would be able to accommodate. But I feel, we found a company out of New York that specializes in it, and we reached out to them. Well, one thing we did, we I went around and looked at some other schools who had done it. And there are actually a lot of schools, I think, that have digitized their, their uh, yearbooks. But we, so really we had two options, to send all the books in. Remember, this is 117 volumes, 117 books that we'd be sending it because it goes back so far for such a, a long, rich uh, history here at Logansport. We could send in a book um, and have them scan it and then send it back, or we could send in a book and they you know rip the, the spine of it out and scan it in then we just destroy one copy of each and we decided to and it was hard to do so to actually um destroy a copy of each book we have plenty i would say backup wise we're in pretty good shape overall in some of our older volumes uh, but we thought it was worth getting them digitized plus is saved, I mean, I want to say it was quarter of the cost to half of the cost by not returning the books. It was a lot easier for them just to, you know, put them in the scanner, do this and not, uh, and giving up one copy uh, for the project. And then I, I also want to say, uh, you know, the wonderful support of uh, the Tatler staff and Mrs. Myers. Mrs. Gould helped out uh, in the student union on gathering up each copy and then uh, boxing them up and then working with our school treasurer, Mrs. Carroll. Uh, everybody's so helpful uh, to get those books shipped. Uh, and there was a lot of boxes. I don't know how many boxes we had, maybe 15, 16 boxes that we had to ship uh, via one of the uh, shipping companies to send them to the, the company. How do you think people have responded to having them online? Well, and that was one of the things where they gave us a PDF copy of each book, but then also a part of this company, they gave us like a bookshelf to put them in with, with a nice little cover and really high quality flip books uh, that are on there. And so we posted on, on our social media and on our website. And I'll tell you, it's been overwhelmingly, uh, it really took off and was such a positive uh, feedback from the community. Um, and a lot of positive comments and so many alumni so appreciative of having the opportunity. Uh, and again, what we thought was just a, a good thing to do at some point. I think the uh, LHS school community and the vast alumni around the world really appreciate it. And uh, 
it's been overwhelmingly uh, positive. And, you know, it's allowed for us to find some errors, too, on some of this gang, like the 2018 book was it copied. I mean, when you have 117 volumes, there's going to be some scanning errors or something didn't get done. So we have some, I have some notes on with the company to get some, some pages that were missed to get them rescanned so we can get them, make sure it's uh, fairly accurate or try to get near 100% uh, 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 accurate. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, you know, I think that one of the things that really it's been um, kind of special or has given me a sense of pride with this project, with, with all the wonderful people that helped out with it, um, on the notes from alumni where they've been able to go in and look at their grandparents or their mom or the great grandparents that maybe graduated from Logansport High School in the 20s and to look at all that rich history. I saw so many comments of that were like, hey, I got to see my, I've never seen my mom in their yearbook or my aunt or uncle. Uh, so really allowed for people, generations of Logan Sport uh, students to go back and see um, our wonderful uh, rich history. I, I just, I really enjoy going into those older uh, tattlers and kind of looking at the clothing at the time and the sports teams and the clubs and activities that went on during that. And also with those flip books, they're all searchable. So you can search by name and quickly find uh, uh, people uh, within those uh, editions. Another cool thing about our school is that we have a culinary class. And here's more about that from Mr. Saylor. What would you say the culinary class is about? Culinary classes about teaching the kids the foundations of cooking, the technical skills behind it, and just overall a hospitality realm that they can use to move into their next year or next career moves after high school. What are some of your favorite dishes to teach? My favorite week of all is Mardi Gras week, where we're doing gumbo, etouffee, jambalaya, shrimp and grits. Uh, beignets is an absolute favorite for everybody. Um, overall, what do you teach in your class? I try to teach a lot of life skills. Um, I know quite a few of my students are probably not going to go into the culinary realm, but they're going to be in a hospitality role at some point. So try and tie everything that we do in the classroom to something that they can use here, school, and elsewhere. Take but why class. should students take the class? Um, I think they should take because, one, we need more people in, our, in the culinary world. We know so many restaurants are having issues getting employees. Um, we know the U.S. economy is moving more towards a hospitality environment and less manufacturing. So this is a great opportunity for all the kids to get on the ground floor so they can be, have a jump on the funds for tomorrow. We hope you've enjoyed this week's episode of The Felix Frame. Come back next week to see Eli Bolt and Peyton Munker back at it again. This has been The Felix Frame, where we frame the news you need to know.